over. Does it over? And over. And over. The pastor Lewis, I messed up, but he does it over. And over. I fell short of his glory, but he does it over. And over. And I messed up many times, but he does it over. And over. And over. I don't know which I'm trying to do it why, but he does it over. Over. his car, y'all ain't hearing me, parks his car in the middle of the street, and he gets out, and he's finna shoot, he's finna light that 18 wheeler up, mind you, PJ and I are parked directly next, y'all, we was parked directly next to, and so I rolled down my window. And I told him, I said, young man, I said, king, called him a king, y'all ain't hear me. I said, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's your life. You pull that trigger, it's over. That's your life. I said, yeah, he was wrong, but it ain't worth it. It ain't, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. He, he, he caught himself. I'm going somewhere with this. And, and he got in the car. But he rolled down his window to talk to me. Yeah. And he said he know he was wrong. Watch this. Right. I said, and so were we. Yeah. We was wrong. But he still saved us. Yeah. We was wrong. Yeah. But he died for us here. Yeah. We was wrong. Yeah. But he shed his blood. Yeah. And if he could die for us. Yeah. And we was wrong. Yeah. We was wrong. Yeah. We was wrong. Yeah. I've sinned, I've messed up, I've gone short of his word. I said, we was wrong. I said, I deserve to die. But he died in my place. I said, don't you pull. Don't you pull it, don't you pull. Don't you pull. He got in his car. And he drove away. And I told PJ, God had us laid on purpose. Because normally we'd have been out of church by this time. 12.30 last week, we were still up in here. And I said, God had us late on purpose. He had us late on purpose. But God. And as I drove off, all I can say was, who open doors that I See, John, for me. She 
really believe he will? Thank you all for these preachers, this choir, Minister Powell, DJ. 
Y'all doing a good job. All right. Up to announcement. Any announcements, Sister Davis? Men that are here. I see Marcel and the young man right there. Young man over here. Listen, if you get pulled over by the cops, if you're not doing any dirt, then just do what they ask you to do. Just follow the instructions, do what they ask you to do. We want you to come home. All right? You're not doing anything wrong? Everything legit? Just do what they ask you to do. Because we don't want you to be judged and executed out there on the, on the sidewalk. We'd rather you be judged in the courtroom. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Giving, giving thanks to God for uh, this gracious opportunity and also to the deacons of this church for allowing me this opportunity. I thank God for once again being amongst the land of the living. That's why for his goodness and his mercy. I don't know about you, but I'm always off of praise. We in January of a new year. That's enough to offer praise for his goodness and his mercy. Somebody, I see him waving their hand way back there when he was in the hospital. But now they in here right now. That's enough to offer him praise. Yeah, yeah. And all the testimonies of people that said about guns and things. And uh, that's enough to offer praise because we're still here. Amen, amen. I'm not going to hold you long. If you would, I would ask that you would turn with me to the 14th chapter of the Gospel of St. John, verse 6. That's the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verse 6. Amen. It's not new. No it's not new. Amen. Amen. When you have it, say amen. amen. The sixth verse says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. For a few minutes, I'd like to talk on the subject, we shall overcome someday. We shall overcome someday. Now, I realize in all of our church buildings, there's always, we have, this. It, really the church is a hospital. And in the hospital, the saved in the hospital are in the recovery room. But those that have not yet come to Christ, you're in the emergency room. And you have an opportunity now to join in and move over to the recovery room. Why should you go, you try to get there? Because first of all, the Lord has said in his word, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also uh, in me. Here it is now, we find that in these times that we're living in right now, there are a whole lot of things that troubles us. Yeah, yeah, don't you fool yourself. It, it, it troubled us that this police officer lost his life just pulling up on somebody and they just ambushed him out of nowhere here. That's a troubling time in our hearts here. COVID, this, this virus that's going on, troubling us right now because some have given up and given in to what the power the politics, politicians are saying, and not trusting in God here. Yeah, yeah, yes. We are living in troubled times. It troubles us when uh, our children uh, can't go anywhere without us being bothered about whether or not they're going to make it to where they're going or come back home here. It troubles our hearts here. But, but Jesus had the perfect answer here. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. In other words, when you want to drift off and you want to fall into self-pity and you want to fall into uh, faulting everybody else and you you looking in all directions, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Why? Because in my Father's house are uh, uh, many mansions here. And what I like about it is Jesus here not only ensures us, but he assures us also here. Yeah, yeah, that's the difference between being insured and being assured. See, when you're insured, you paying in, but somebody else reap the benefits here. But when you usher here, that means when you pay in, you're going to reap the benefits. And you're reaping them right now with your song for your goodness and your mercy toward us. That's assurance right now. We're reaping those benefits uh, right now here. And so Jesus, uh, in this pair, this story here, he was simply calming his 
disciples down. Peter here got a little word. Peter had been boasting now about what all he would do. He would go with the Lord all the way. And Jesus burst his bubble by telling him before the cock crows three times, you gonna deny me here. And you know what? That kind of got uh, Peter down here. And he also told uh, uh, them that one of you will betray me when I get ready to go to Calvary here. Yeah, yeah, everybody sitting in here not on my side. Somebody is going to betray me. Well, the person on the floor today, is anybody sitting in here that the Lord is asking or uh, telling you you're going to betray him as he brought you safe this far, but you forgot where he brought you from. You done forgot who it was that brought you. That betraying him. Because he brought you safe this far. But the good news is knowing that he said, I go away to prepare a place for you. And he said, well, I am. Don't worry about it. You'll be there also here. That's good news to know. That, that, that's why I say those of us that are saved, we're in the recovery room. Because we waiting till the Lord said, it's time for us to go home. Yeah, yeah when you're in the recovery room, you, you realize this world is not our home here. Yeah, we just passing through here. That's why we ought not let our hearts uh, be troubled here. Yeah, I know the virus is here. I know all of the violence that's going on right now, but I'm not going to let that sidetrack me because if I'm able to quote, like Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, then why am I letting stuff like this trouble me and get me down here? Hey, the devil is moving right now. The devil don't want us to, uh, he don't want us to acknowledge who Christ is. He want us to stay in the shape that we're in here. But let me tell you something. God has something better uh, for us here. Yeah, we got to go through the storm and the rain here. But after the storm and the rain here, the sun is going to shine here. And when the sun shines, guess what? The S-O-N is going to hold his hands out and welcome us back home. Here. Yeah, yeah, God has been good to us here. He said, now around God and there are many mansions here. Now I don't want you to get confused because a lot of times we talk about mansions, we look at it as luxury. Now that means there are many rooms here. God has enough rooms prepared for us that if all of us were saved and sanctified, we'd all have a home somewhere in the kingdom here. But God here, God here is saying, Jesus said, first of all, you believe in God, believe also uh, in me here. In other words, don't try to get by me and think you're going to uh, automatically, as long as you believe God and you leave me out, don't think that's going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. It's just like you who have uh, children here. If, 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 if somebody invites you over to their house uh, for dinner, and they say, well, you can come, but don't bring uh, your children here. The first thing you're going to say, well, if you can't accept my child coming over there, then there's no need of me coming over there. And that's what Jesus is saying, that, that ye believe in God, you also have to believe in me. Yeah, I know a lot of people running around here telling us that Jesus is just a mere man. That you don't have to believe in him. But, but, but I'm glad today that Jesus said a lot of that when he said, I am the way. In other words, and I am the truth and I am the life here. In other words, Jesus didn't say uh, 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 that I could be the way. He said, I am uh, the way here. And then uh, that's what we have to take that to heart here. In other words, no matter how uh, uh, smart you may get, no matter how many doctorate degrees you might have, no matter how many master degrees you might have, no matter how many bachelor degrees uh, you might have, still you can't go by Jesus and get into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I am uh, the way here. And so when we're, as we're traveling this road here, we have to realize that we got to overcome a lot of things here. 
There are a lot of obstacles that the devil is throwing in our ways here. There's a lot of different philosophies that the devil is throwing out there for us to grab hold of here. But we have to realize that in spite of all of that that he throws out, there is a way uh, that no man can travel except through uh, Jesus Christ here. And so we have to realize the only way we're going to overcome this is first of all, we got to let go of our way and try and do the Lord's way here. Because Solomon said it best in uh, the third chapter of Proverbs uh, when he said, trust in the Lord always and lean not to your own understanding. When you lean to your own understanding, that's when your heart uh, gets troubled here. But there's a song that says, trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes. Trouble in my way, I have to moan sometimes. Trouble in my way, I have to pray sometimes. But guess what? When I start to pray about it, Jesus will fix it after a while. And so I just want to let us know today that, yeah, we overcame some things in 2021 here. Yeah, yeah, we've had some sickness in 2021. Yeah, we had some death to happen in our families in 20 and 21. We've had some new aches and pain. We had some aches and pain in 20 and 21. But guess what? The Lord has still brought us safely over into 20 and 22 here. And so I just want to encourage those of us that are in the recovery room, you continue to hold on to God's unchanging hands. I want to tell those that are in the emergency room that it's time now for you to get on board here. There's a train that is moving uh, through the station here, and it's time for you to get on here. Now, the only way you're going to get on is you got to have the word of God on the inside of you here. Scripture said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God here. And so when you first of all realize that the insurer has assured you, then you are able to go on a little bit further. When you realize that no matter what you went through on last year, that same insurer and assurer brought you over into a brand new year. When you realize that when you're traveling on life's uh, highway here, and you realize that somebody out there is acting uh, out of character here, and the Lord allowed you to make it uh, to your home here, you overcame uh, on this journey here. And so I want to let you know how the reason how you overcame is because of his goodness and his mercy. In other words, uh, the word said that his goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our life here. And when you learn how to realize that that same Jesus that said, I am the way here, he's also the truth here. In other words, the one thing I found out about Jesus here, he can do all things, but he cannot lie here. If he told you that if you walk with me, I'll walk with you. If you hold my hand, I'll hold your hand. I'll be there with you always, even to the end right now. You can take that to the bank of Jesus right now. You can cash it on any day right now. You know some banks are closed on holiday right now, but the word of God, you can cash it in on any day at any time right now. You say, I am the way, the truth, and the life right now. In other words, no man, no man, no man come to the Father but by me. Back up just a little bit right now because that's something significant right now about the I am God right now. That's the same thing that he told Moses. When Moses said, Who shall I tell Pharaoh that sent me? Jesus said, I am that I am that sent 
you right now. But let me tell you something. You've been in a hospital and walked out of the hospital. Who brought you out of there? It was I am. And I am right now. Those of you who have lost loved ones. Who is it that brought you safe this far? I am. And the one that brought you right now. Oh, uh-huh. 
Today has been a good day. Amen, amen. And I'm not going to hold you long because we do have this meeting. I want to give everybody a chance to relax and everything. But as we prepare to dismiss, let's not stop praying. Let's go right into the meeting praying. And continue to praise God for who he is and what he has done for us. Amen. Nothing else will stand. Our God and our Father, we come now, Lord, at this time, thanking you for this opportunity. Lord, thank you for another chance. Another chance to be able to show our appreciation for what you've done for us. Oh, God, you've been good to us right now. You've been better to us than we could ever possibly be to ourselves. Lord, we've heard folks say, if you had, we had 10,000 tons, we couldn't thank you enough. But, oh God, I'm asking you today, my Father, that even if we don't have that many tons, don't let us stop thanking you. Lord, keep it on our mind right now. Motivate us, my Father, to do better in 2022 than we did in 2021. Lord, we trust you because you're long-suffering. Oh God, we trust you, my Father, because you're good right now. We trust you, my Father, because you are dependable right now. Heavenly Father, when friends walked out on us, you was right there. When family left us, my Father, you was right there. Lord, we just want to thank you right now. Heavenly Father, there's nothing wrong with praising you right now. Lord, we praise you because you're worthy right now. We praise you, my Father, for who you are right now. We praise you, Lord, for what you are right now. We praise you, Lord, for what you've done for us right now. We praise you, Lord, for what you're going to do for us right now. Lord, just have mercy right now. Heavenly Father, dear Lord, we realize we're not sinless, my Father. Forgive us of our sins. Heavenly Father, forgive us, Lord, if we've hurt somebody feelings. Forgive us, Lord, if we've wronged somebody in any kind of way, my Father. Lord, just have mercy right now. Strengthen us where we're weak. Build us up, Lord, where we're torn down. Prop us up, my Father, on every lean inside. And now, Lord, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us. Now, henceforth and forevermore, let us all respond by saying,